Good morning. It's Brother Chad Long from Delhi Baptist Church, and uh, we are here to look at First John chapter four. We left off in verse seventeen, and I remember telling you I want to do a little more study back on uh, verse uh, fourteen and fifteen, and I will, um, and I may do an, uh, a, I may do it, and when we finish First John, I may come back and cover those just specifically. We'll see. But there's there's so much here that I wish I could bring out. And I, again, I want people to take what they study here with me and study deeper, learn more, get closer, draw closer to God. That's the only way you'll do it is through His Word. Um, you just have to, and, and I wish more people would. You've got to develop a hunger and a thirst for for the Lord's Word and, and just study into it and uh, make it come alive in you. You know, if this is just a book, if it's just a book that we read now and then, there's no power in it. Um, but if it's if it becomes more than just a book to you, if it becomes truth to you in life, and if you make it, um, if, if you if you reach for this book the way you reach for something to eat and drink, it'll make sense. which I will reread where John says herein is our love made perfect um, not our love so much as the love of Christ in us because we learn from him what love is but he says herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is so are we in this world our perfection and our boldness and as we will be is all wrapped up in who he is um our, our love is made perfect because it's made, it's Him and He's perfect. Um, God is love. And so if you have God, you have love. But that love is Him. It's not us. It's Him. And as, as we show Him every day, we show love because God is love. I mean, simply put, that's what He's saying here. Um, I don't know an easier way to put it. When you show good and wonderful things, you are showing God. Because there is no good and wonderful in us. We're just, uh, I wish that were not so, but it is. Our sin nature is passed down from Adam, and that's what we're made of. But when we're born again, when we're filled with the Holy Ghost and we're saved, our, our uh, what's inside us then becomes uh, that that is perfect, that that is without fear, that is, that is holy. And so as long as we're showing that side of us, the who, he who is within us, then we're showing. scare me I, i'm okay with them on a nest spiders on a nest don't bother me or a web rather they don't bother me so bad i can look at garden spiders and i can get really close to a, to a web with a garden spider on it because they have never attacked me i've never even seen them come off their web and garden spiders don't bother me at all just so long as they don't touch me <laughs> if someone were to take a garden spider and throw it on me i would probably lose my mind so i, I don't like spiders I don't like them to touch me it gives me the heebie-jeebies um, people are scared of coronavirus. I mean, some people really freak out about it. And if that's you, I'm not being critical. I'm just making a point. People can have fear. But God doesn't have any fear. So the more of Him we have in us, uh, and, and listen, if we have the Holy Spirit, we have the Holy Spirit. But we don't always let the Holy Spirit guide. 
We don't always we don't always let him lead, and we don't always let him completely control and fill us. We compartmentalize the Holy Spirit. He's within us, and we compartmentalize him. We hold him in this spot, and we allow him to move when we're listening to him, and we keep him kind of enclosed when we're not listening to him. And so when he's not in full control, and we're not letting him lead and guide and use us as God sees fit, then we can be motivated by fear. But when the Holy be a hell but he is just and he is holy and he has to punish sin look he doesn't want to but he has to it's just the way that it is so anyway um perfect love casteth out fear because fear hath torment he that feareth is not made perfect in love if you're letting full full fear rule you then you're not um then you're not trusting god it's, it's one thing to, to get a little scared now and then, but it's another thing to let fear rule you. <clears throat> fear is the opposite of the Holy Spirit. Once again, you can have fear, and you can compartmentalize it, and you can allow it to take over and run you and, and, and rule you. Or you can put it up here where, out of the way and say, you know what, I'm not letting that run things. I'm not the Holy Spirit run things. But they, they, they kind of work in opposite of one another because I believe fear is generated by the devil. Now, he doesn't live within us, but he does get a particular control over us when we don't uh, trust God like we should. But if you let the Holy Spirit lead and guide and direct and follow him and give him a place in your life, <clears throat> you don't have to worry about it. You can use to determine where we stand with the Lord. If you know you're saved, you don't have any fear. Look, I'll be real honest with you. I'm not looking forward to the point of death. I'm not. Because I don't know what that's going to feel like. And I don't I don't necessarily want to experience any pain. But as far as the experience of death, of, of crossing over, of, of no longer existing in this form, I have no fear of that. I'm not scared to die. I'm scared of the process. But I'm not scared of the event. Um, in fact, I'm ready. I'm ready to go and be with the Lord whenever He's ready. And that's just, you know, the way I think we're supposed to be. <laughs> but those who fear death, why do they fear death? Um, what is it that's scaring them? Obviously, the pain is understandable, but I, I, that, that would scare me too. But the end result, I'm not scared of that. I don't have any reason to be because I'm going to be with the Lord. So anyway, um, these are just examples of fear. Anyway, if you're, if you're living your life in fear, I'm not going to tell you you're not saved. I'm going to tell you that you should check and make sure. That's, and if you are saved, you need to listen to the Holy Spirit and not to your fears. Verse 19, we love him because he first loved us. That's redundant. I know that. <clears throat> but he wants us to remember that the only way we can love him is if we have him in us. Because he loved us first. Verse 20, if a man say, I love God and hated his brother, he is a liar. 
For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? This is a good point. You know, if you can't exhibit love for people here in, within our view, how can you exhibit love for a God you've never laid eyes on? Um, I, all I can tell you is that my love for God stems from the fact that He loves me and He's within me. I'll give you an example. If I was going to loan somebody $5,000, I'd have to borrow it first. I don't have $5,000. not sitting around. I might can liquidate some things and have it, but I don't have that sitting around, which is awful. I'm almost 42 years old, and I don't have $5,000 in an account somewhere saved. I'm sorry, I don't. Maybe I should, but I've got too many kids. I just don't. So I guess the, the point here is um, the, uh, the love that we give is like money that we give that we don't have. I would have to borrow it to have it to give you if I was going to loan it to you. And in order to love God or anyone else, I have to first have that love, which I only have if I have God. Another example of assurance of our salvation is, do you have the ability to love? True love, godly love. Well, if you have the Lord, if you're saved, you do. You have that ability. Whether you use it or not is another matter. But having it, you have to first have Christ in your heart. You have to be saved. Now, if you're saved, you have the love of Jesus in you, and you can exhibit that love, and you can love him back, and you can love others. You can fulfill the two commandments Christ gave, but only if you have Christ. See, that's the point. Jesus gave two commandments to sum up all of the 613 laws of Moses. He said, love God with all your uh, heart, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Well, you can do that if you have Christ in you, because you have he who is love. If you... Uh, don't have him you can't do those things there's no way there's no way you can keep those two commandments and we can't keep them anyway because we're human but to have any hope to keep them you have to have Christ in you he says in this commandment have we from him that he who loveth God loveth his brother also so he's saying what I just told you that if you have the love of God in you you can love your brother if you don't have the love of God in you you can't love anyone because you don't know what love is. Love is not a feeling. And love is not tied to a particular relationship other than Christ. True love is found in Jesus. And you have to have that relationship to have it and to understand it and to exemplify it. So anyway, I hope that's clear. We're going to move into a new section tomorrow in chapter 5. And it's going to go another direction. But it's still going to prove that you can know whether or not you're saved. And it's going to sum up some of the rest of this. So anyway... um. I hope you're getting what I'm saying. I hope I'm making it clear. I hope you have the love of Jesus in your heart. Uh, we used to sing a song when I was a kid. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart. I've got the wonderful love of my blessed Redeemer way down in the depths of my heart. If you didn't follow that, that's okay. That was one of the fun verses because it was how many words could you fit into a beat. I'll do it one more time. I have the wonderful love of my blessed Redeemer way down in the depths of my heart. Down in the depths of my heart. Try to do it fast. I have the wonderful love of my blessed Redeemer way down in the depths of my heart. See, that was part of the game. That was fun. But anyway, the truth is, if you have the wonderful love of your blessed Redeemer way down in the depths of your heart, then you can understand what he's saying here, and you can give that love back to others. Have a wonderful day and uh, a wonderful rest of your week. God bless you.